The year was 1928, and my great-grandfather, the great mechanic from the Plains, was working at warp speed. That year, the acquisition of Dodge Brothers made the Chrysler Corporation the third largest automobile company in North America. It was also the debut of the Plymouth Automobile, the opening of the Chrysler Engineering Building, and the introduction of the DeSoto Automobile, which established a first-year production record that lasted almost 30 years. To top it off, in October 1928, Walter P. Chrysler announced that he would create in New York City the Chrysler Building, which when completed in 1930, briefly became the tallest building in the world at 1,046 feet. Its purpose was as complex as its design. It was a celebration of his business success, a tribute to the auto industry, a jolt of architectural and business energy for the languishing east side of New York City, and a personal legacy and incentive for his sons, Walter Jr. and Jack. Walter P. Chrysler and his architect, William Van Allen, designed a building that would pay tribute to the technology of the age. Walter P. Chrysler was always a hands-on craftsman, and like the soon-to-be-designed iconoclastic airflow with its Art Deco highlights, Walter P. Chrysler never shied away from innovation and the alchemical mix of technology and beauty. Universally admired by contemporary architects and often lauded as the finest example of Art Deco architecture in the world, the Chrysler building design was a daring break from architectural tradition, synthesizing ancient traditions with modern artistic insights. Contracted to build the tallest building in the world, Van Allen quickly found himself in a competition between the Empire State Building and the Manhattan Bank, later to become the Trump Building. The rivalry was so fierce that Walter P. Chrysler and Van Allen worked in secret on the design and construction of the 180-foot spire that would be raised from an elevator shaft at the last minute to assure its winning height. Bands of colored brickwork give the illusion of pillars, Eight polished steel eagle heads perch like giant hood ornaments on the corner points of the 61st floor, and winged gargoyles flow upward and majestically to the crown's triangular windows, stacked and fanned out like magic fish scales glinting in the sun. The interior exuded inspiration. Wood inlay and art deco elevators, there were 32. Red African marble with stainless steel trim, a lobby ceiling mural, the largest mural in the world at its time by Edward Trumbull, depicting airplanes and automotive assembly lines, all surrounded by concentric circles of aluminum leaf. The engineering aspects of the building were dynamic. Convection radiators controlled independently by tenants of each office, a sophisticated ventilating system, six cubic tons of air per hour, along with massive air conditioning units, a private water treatment plant, centralized vacuum systems on all levels, and its own waste treatment center speak to the building's breathtaking accomplishments. No expense was spared for luxury, utility, and safety. The 66th to the 68th floors were known as the Cloud Club. It was a personal Walter P. Chrysler touch that broke away from its modernist surroundings by using baronial Tudor-style construction with oak walls, pegged plank floors, wood beams and wrought iron chandeliers lending it a medieval ambience. A cloud mural across the vaulted ceiling gave the illusion of open sky and a large etched glass frieze of auto workers paid homage to Walter P. Chrysler's working man's roots and to the lifeblood of the Chrysler Corporation. In response to its era, it was prohibition. The cloud club was also a speakeasy available to its private members complete with secret hieroglyphic coated lockers to stash away their favorite hooch. It was Walter P. Chrysler who implemented the building's crowning achievement. He insisted that Van Allen drop the original plans for a bowler-shaped dome and instead adopt his idea for something more inspiring. To that end, he had specially diamond-honed Enduro KA2 stainless steel fabricated to cover the entire set of sunburst arches around the triangular windows of the terraced crown. It continues to shine so intensely that it can be seen for miles by ships at sea. Walter P. Chrysler's ascetic genius was a rare alloy forged out of the machinist demands for precision and an eye for revolutionary aesthetics. From automotive engineering and design to the glistening spire atop the Chrysler building, Walter P. Chrysler always transcended the status quo. 
Turn the ignition key to the Chrysler 300C and a spark will arc from Walter P. Chrysler's 1924 Chrysler 6 to the new best-in-class V6. Study the advanced technology of the dash of today's Chrysler and know that it is pure Chrysler legacy, born out of visionary design and an innate sense of style.